Welcome to Logitech. I'm your host, Dr. Raymond Chang. Now, just these few days, a number of high schools in America were running into some very interesting yet embarrassing problems. What is that? Well, I, I, I don't mean to laugh, but from Lake Ridge High School in Oregon to Lyons Township High School in Illinois, boys were ripping napkin and tampon dispensers off the walls of the bathrooms and dumping them into toilet bowls. Now, of course, school officials have formally asked the boys to stop destroying the free menstrual products they're being provided with because their intention were to give parents resources on menstruation, menstrual products, sexuality and health in order to help parents explain to the kids that menstruation is normal for a person that has a uterus. But why were there napkins and tampon dispensers in the boys' bathroom in the first place? This week, we'll have a look at this. So why were there napkin and tampon dispensers in the boys' bathroom in the first place? Now the answer goes back to 2021. Now Oregon's 2021 Menstrual Dignity Act requires all public schools, i.e. elementary, middle and high schools, to provide all students, regardless of gender, age, ability and socioeconomic status, with menstrual products in order to promote privacy, inclusivity, access and education. Now the educational impact of putting napkin and tampon dispensers in boys' bathrooms of course, is to inform children that boys can have periods, which is to say that girls can be boys. Now, this happens not just in Oregon. Now, in California, the Menstrual Equity for All Act was signed into law in October 2021. Now, the law requires all public schools serving any grade 6 to 12 to provide free menstrual products in school bathrooms by the start of the 2022 to 2023 school year. So now they're in Oregon and California. And, and who knows if it's going to be all over the United States of America over the next few years. But wait a minute. Well, I can understand why we need to explain to kids that menstruation is normal for a person that has a uterus, but, but it is also normal for a society to have homeless and poor people. So should the kids not be allowed to go home and just be, you know, left in the streets so that officials can help parents explain to the kids what homeless and poor means? And meanwhile, it is normal as well for society to have a bunch of criminals, some drug dealers, and even a few serial killers. And, and yeah, shooters as well. Oh my god. So should the kids be exposed to those concepts as well, as if those were viable options? Now, now come on, those are not and never options. These are no-nos. So do people really have to go through something in order to understand that something? Now, I honestly doubt. And, and meanwhile in Oregon, there is an email being sent out by school officials which stated each time that when the dispensers are taken down and, and got thrown into the toilet, the school needs to spend time and resources putting them back up in order to be compliant with the Menstrual Dignity Act. And, and therefore, they're asking all the students, the student body of course, to be respectful of school property and, and to be sensitive to all of their um, students' needs. Now, now, look at what some parents from the organization, uh, Parents as First Educators, PFE, say in a Facebook post. It's all politics. Agendas that go against the Bible. We're forced to celebrate anything and everything to avoid being sued, even if it stands against the Bible in which Catholic schools are meant to not only follow, but respect. Now, stronger staff Men, of course, using the gender card not to have women in anything that isn't on their work plans because morals and simply being a gentleman is not respected anymore. Or race cards being used to avoid certain jobs or work with certain student or staff. Now, it is indeed very sad how unprofessional and unethical these school boards have become. Now, now common it was actually the government that is not respectful, or the lawmakers that is not respectful of what the majority feels about the, you know, traditional American moral and ethical values and, and what they really care in the first place. Now, parents care about their kids and, and how to teach their kids to become good men and women. Now, that's for sure. But when the government puts forward an idea that clashes with what we all believe, there will be problems. Now, now let's check this video from Parents as First Educators at, uh, um, at how a 17-year-old student is being bullied. I'm here to speak about Catholic schools in our board staying true to the Word of God. I'm a 17-year-old student within the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board. Since I've joined the school board back in 2020, I've noticed that my school and others have been promoting things that go directly against the biblical principles 
that we are supposed to follow, as well as the fact that our schools are slipping away from biblical principles and more into secularism by compromising the holy word of God. An example of this could be the pride flag. I know it is a heavy and sensitive topic, and it is heavily stigmatized that Christians dislike people of the LGBTQ community, but that is not what the case should be at all. The point that I'm making is that this specific topic is spoken about in the Bible multiple times, yet we promote it. If we keep on promoting things that go against what God stands for, what makes us different than any other school board? What sets us apart from them? As a Catholic school board that is raising a new generation, we cannot pick and choose what to follow when it comes to God. All that we'll be teaching people is to only follow what you feel like you want to follow, not what we know we should be following. Following God and His Word doesn't stop us from respecting everyone as individuals like some may think. In fact, it is a direct commandment to love your neighbor like you love yourself. But just because we should love our neighbor doesn't mean we stand for things that go against God. I would say the same for God's love in the sense that even though God loves everyone, it doesn't mean He approves of everything we do. All of this leads into my next point. It is something that happened to me personally at my school. Three months ago, I was running for a position in my school, and I wanted to find a way to grow my campaign. A few of my friends told me that I can go to a staff member to get the item I needed. I went to the staff member and I asked about it. I did ask and I was told I could use it and the staff member asked me about my political opinion out of nowhere. I was honestly taken aback because I didn't expect that but I gave an honest and respectful answer. The staff member then asked me and I quote, if I scroll through your account will I find anything anti-LGBTQ? End quote. I said no. Then we continued conversing then I left the class. Then one of my friends called me back and said I was needed. The staff member came out of the room and asked me if I support the LGBTQ community. And I said, because of my religion, no. And I was going to say more, but I was cut off and the staff member said, and I quote, all right, I can't have anything to do with you, end quote. So then I couldn't use the item I needed and I just said, I understand, then I walked away. Since, since that day, I've had another issue with another staff member regarding the same incident. It wasn't my fault either. Now I walk around school feeling anxious and scared because I have to worry about who knows about what happened and why it happened to me. My parents chose the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board to strengthen my faith in God. They never thought that I would be harassed and scrutinized for my faith. I can't go into too many specifics because of time, but I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of clarification? Seeing none, thank you so much for your presentation. Now, I do understand that we have to respect LGBTQ rights, and I, I'm not saying that we should say no to them, okay? What I'm saying, what I'm trying to say here is that napkin, this napkin and tampon thing is yet another way of opening up what options could mean. Now, if it were just for fun, say for instance, you can provide free condoms at all hospitals, intensive care units, so that patients, I mean, there, in the ICU, remember that they should really get well soon so that they can enjoy the condoms again. Or you can provide free comms to all Buddhist monasteries so that they could remember the days when they still have hair. Now, now, but what if there is a hidden agenda? Now, let me quote you some extreme examples. Go check the Bible for the pattern. Sleeping with the father's concubine. Now, now this pattern repeated many, many times in the Bible. Reuben slept with Biha, now his father's concubine. That was Genesis chapter 35, verse 22. Abner slept with Rizba, his great uncle Saul's concubine. And Saul's son, Ishba, took this as a personal attack. And you know what he said to Abner? He said, why have you gone into my father's concubine? That was 2 Samuel chapter 3. And then Absalom slept with several of his father's concubines, did it out in, in plain view and on the advice of the king's counselor. 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 20 to 23. And finally, Adonia makes a desperate attempt to marry and sleep with Abishag, his father David's concubine. And Solomon interprets this as a play for the throne. Look at, check out the books of the first kings, chapter 2, verse 13 to 25. Have I missed any? I, I don't know. But, but no matter what you make out of these examples, I'm sure none of us, none of us would be so naive as to think that these are all love stories. 
or even simple rape stories. Now, all of these stories take place in the context of a disputed succession or inheritance, and the sex seems to be just part of a, you know, a gambit to claim to be the legitimate successor. And notably, none of them succeeded. So, whether it was seen as a way of taking something away from the father, or be it an insult to the father, we can't tell for sure. But what is clear here is that it is not a way to explain to anyone, let alone kids, that this is ever an option. Now, if someone ever tells you that this is an option, there must be a catch somewhere, hidden somewhere out there. So let's go back to the discussion about the, the napkin and the tampon thing. Now, in, indeed, the majority of young people have been swept along by the, by the ever-expanding LGBTQ movement over the last decade and, and have enthusiastically adopted the new ideology of multiplying identities. Talk to young people these days. They'll tell you uh, they have a number of different pronouns, they have a number of different genders, and they won't even tell you that they are you know, simply a guy or a girl. Now, and a not insignificant minority of kids, however, are getting sick of being constantly force-fed such LGBT ideology. Now, just earlier last month, for example, high school students from Shen Blur Secondary School in Pincourt, Quebec, cheered as one of them ripped down the pride flag that had been hung in their school and threw it down, trampling it once it hit the ground. Now, on the same day, LifeSite News reported students from Far International School put out a petition asking that all LGBT flags and posters be taken down in the school. And of course, school officials refused, and, and but one of the you know, LGBT activists have worried that there is a rise in students rejecting LGBT ideology. You know, that's not the only example of resistance to Pride Month in Canada. More than 400 pupils in one of Linda's largest elementary schools, uh, about one-third of the entire head count, stayed home last Wednesday, on a day when the rainbow flag flew across the school district as the area public board saluted the International Day against homophobia, biphobia, and transphobia. Now, you know, much to the horror of LGBT activists, the, the provincial government of New Brunswick has promised to review the school LGBT policy after receiving hundreds of complaints. Oh, oh by the way, talking about complaints, do you know that moms are also complaining about books that are being read by kids from 4 to 8 in the United States of America as well? Check this. So the problem with the books that our chapters across the country have concerns with, Chris, is that they are obscene. They are obscene and they are pornographic. This has nothing to do with if it's male and male, female and female, or male and female. They are obscene and they are pornographic. And you know, Gender Queer is just one of the many books. Here's My Body is Growing, a guide for children four to eight. I could read to you out of this book. It is disgusting. It is, um, it is with a man and a woman, uh, 20 years old. It is, it's not appropriate. This is for ages four to eight. And Kinder, kindergarten through third grade. And it says that Sabrina's vagina becomes moist and warm and Marco's penis gets very stiff. Marco then pushes his penis into Sabrina's vagina, always in and out, that feels great for both of them. It tells you before this that they are unmarried and living together and 20 years old. This is appropriate for four to eight year olds. This is found in grade schools all across the country. You know, these moms are not against LGBT. They're only talking about the content that is being inappropriate. Now, going back to Canada, while most Canadians are either supportive of or apathetic towards many aspects of LGBT agenda, the sheer aggressiveness of the movement's evangelism and the, and the near total takeover of schools is beginning to, you know, anger many common sense people who would otherwise have ignored the issue entirely. And the same is true for kids who have protested unisex bathrooms and other LGBT policies, torn tampon dispensers off the walls of boys' bathrooms, and are now occasionally so fed up that they have stayed home from school during mandatory LGBT days. Nobody asked them if they supported an ever-growing list of ideological beliefs. The flags of these movements were hoisted at the behest of activists in the name of youth safety. Wow, you won't believe this. So, so how much of LGBTQ or whatever ideologies is enough? That depends on what you believe and who you are. Now, now you see how different Americans and Chinese can be, or Asians can be, and the Western and the Eastern cultures are equally different as well. Now, for instance, when red is considered the color of danger in the West, it is the auspicious color among the Chinese. Now, that's why when people in the West put on beautiful white wedding gowns when they get married, Chinese put on red wedding dresses to celebrate their weddings. And while we're talking about sex and LGBTQ stuff, do you know that issues like, like books for small kids with those obscene contents just don't appear in Asia, or at least not yet. Now, now, let me try to give you an idea how different that is in Asia. You know, here in Asia, especially among Chinese, you probably won't even find the term make love 
in Chinese, of course, among lyrics, song lyrics, of course, and you just don't even find those in the songs. Yet you hear that almost every day in English in American songs. You know, there is always a fine red line for cultural taboos like this among the Chinese, and they're also fighting to protect it, just like the moms from, you know, moms from liberty. I'm not saying that one particular culture is superior over any others. What I am saying here is that cultures are and should be different, and hence should be respected. So when Americans are fighting for beliefs and values they treasure, so are people here in Asia, in Hong Kong, where we are also fighting for stability and economic prosperity that we cherish. Now, analogous to the two moms from Moms for Liberty, who are not against the LGBT community and are just only talking about the obscene content that is inappropriate and that book for kids, People here are also not against LGBTQ as well. It's just like that obscene content. I mean, the, the, the changes that are too radical, too quick, that just isn't appropriate for an Asian place, let alone the conservative Chinese. So, so what do you think? When the US consulate in Hong Kong and Macau is now heavily promoting the upcoming 11 gay games come Pride Month to be held in Hong Kong between the 3rd and the 11th of November 2023. Now that's just four months down the road. What do you think people here would think about Americans? So, until then, ciao. Before you leave, please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this with your friends. See you in the next episode.